Hey everybody, I'm Drake White. I'm a musician, an artist. I love bouncing across stages all over the world. I love music. This was me last year, rocking and rolling. So that's it. That's what I'm passionate about. I love that. I love that oxygen rich blood that pumps through my soul when I'm getting to do that. I love pushing it to the brink, to the edge, because I believe that's what the song, that's what the fan, that's what they deserve. What do you love? What makes the room change colors when you think about it? Do you feel that, that slight pressure in the back of your mind? See, I'm a relentless optimist. I always have been to the point where when I bait the hook and throw the, the bait in, I think I'm going to catch a fish every time. When I pick up a pen to write a song, I think that next song that's going to change the world might, just might come out. Actually, I know it's going to come out. It's just part of me. I love that relentless optimism. My favorite quote is, be alert. Adventure can strike from any direction. And that's from a very wise man named Buzz Lightyear. See, I got a headache in 2019. This wasn't any headache. It gripped my brain and would not let go. Man, I, I've had a couple of hangovers, but never a headache like this. This was insane, and it landed me in the emergency room. That emergency room visit told me that I had a wad of veins and arteries in the back right side of my brain called an arterial venous malformation, an AVM. Now, this AVM was, sounds scary, and it was scary. But I really wasn't worried about anything. I mean, I was going to live. My biggest worry was that that stage was going to be taken away from me. That I wasn't going to get to do what I loved. That that 100% that I once had was out of reach, was gone. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you've strived to climb the ladder to do something that you love and that you're passionate about, only to have that fire inside your chest extinguished. I don't know, maybe it was a profound failure or an addiction or, you know, a family matter. But whatever it was, your 100% feels lost. You feel like it's gone. Well, I came out here today because we're wrong. And we're not wrong because these crazy things don't happen. We're wrong because we don't understand what 100% really is. You see, it looks like this. Passion, pressure, progression. Because we're passionate, we feel this pressure to progress along this never-ending trajectory, this ladder to the sky. And it gets us young. Even as infants, we're taught to hold our head up. Then we're taught to roll over. Then we're taught to crawl and then walk. And if any point in that, that scenario, we back down, it's just unacceptable. Who we are today isn't enough for tomorrow. When I got the diagnosis, um, 
When I got the diagnosis from the doctors, I went in, had a, had a bunch of, of appointments at the hospital, and I came in and we started laying out the groundwork of how to take care of this ABM. The day I'm sitting in the doctor's office, doctor walks in to, to cover this, and I look at his name tag, and I'm sitting there kind of squinting, and it says doctor of neurology, or brain surgeon, but his name is what stood out to me. Dr. Robert Miracle. Holy Moses. I mean, my brain surgeon's name was Dr. Miracle. Talk about relentless optimism. This guy laid out a, an amazing plan. He said, I'm going to perform these embolization surgeries by running a, a catheter up your femoral artery, up into the back of your brain, accessing this AVM. And I'm going to pump it full of glue. This is going to take about six to eight months. We're going to see how you do with these surgeries. And the good news, and what I was wondering, is you'll be able to continue with your career doing what you love. We can schedule these out on Mondays, and you can jump on a plane or a bus and meet your band and crew wherever they're at in the world. Um, as long as you feel good. That's all I needed to know. The green light. The green light was lit. The fire was lit. I called everybody I knew and said, let's go. Let's get this band together. Let's get this tour together. And let's go out there and do what we love to do. So, off we went. Now, performing with this AVM was a little different for me. I've been used to bouncing all over the stage, not really caring about anything except for going for it. And I approached this first show kind of like a deer approaches a field, very carefully. My biggest fear was that AVM would rupture, and we didn't want that. But there was only a 4% chance of that happening. So I picked my spots and went for it. I got on stage, and that first show went off without a hitch. We were, we were good. Kind of dodged a bullet. Well, two shows turned to three, three to four, four to five. And before I knew it, I had completed three embolizations in about 25, 30 shows. Fourth of July came and went, and August was hot. August the 12th was my fourth embolization. And we went through it, and Dr. Miracle was confident that he had 80% of this AVM embolized, that he had 80% of it shut off. With this good news, I could approach the next, next rest of our tour with my mind on that music instead of my health. We blasted off and were set to go to Roanoke, Virginia, and then Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, two of my favorite places. We loaded the bus, blazed off to, to Roanoke, not knowing that we would never make it to the beach. We got to Roanoke, Virginia, and it was 9 a.m. in the morning, and I kind of went through my morning routine, a cake cup of coffee, try to find a breakfast spot, and really look for antique stores and try to find some good guitar deals or try to find a, a vintage hat like the one I got on. We, uh, we went through the day, went through sound check, kept everything rolling, and it was a normal day. Before we knew it, it was showtime. Now this amphitheater was gorgeous. About 2,500 people started filing in. The sky looked like a cotton candy, and it was... Ferris wheels and funnel cakes. The noises, the sounds. Man, it just lights me on fire today. I love it. So we kicked into the set, and I ripped off a couple of songs, you know, two or three songs pretty quickly to get the, to get the blood pumping, you know, to get the sweat going. And we had them right there. They were right there with us, you know, to the point where I could just feel, I could feel the air moving 
in the, in the little amphitheater. I decided to bring it down for a song called The Coast is Clear. This song feels like your grandmother playing organ in church on Sunday morning. It's very peaceful and it's padding. And about that time, I felt a little tingle in the left side of my arm. That tingle ran down the left side of my leg. And I looked down and I realized that I was holding the microphone as tight as I could, but it felt like I was going to drop it. My left leg felt like I had a 12-inch cinder block on the end of it all of a sudden. Very heavy. And that cotton candy sky started spinning. About that time, I looked up and tried to, tried to get the words out, and I couldn't. And I heard, a, I heard a pop. And that pop was that AVM, the rest of that AVM rupturing, causing me to have what is called a hemorrhagic stroke. Now, I was drug off stage, wrapped in a sheet, and put on a stretcher. I went for giving my all across every stage in the world that I, that I found myself on to being hauled around from place to place like a giant burrito. I remember being backstage and breathing in through my nose, out through my mouth, in through my nose, out through my mouth, and thinking, Drake, if you just keep breathing, you're not dead. I made that choice to keep going, to keep doing, to keep, keep going. I made it through the night and I remember yearning for a miracle, for Dr. Miracle, for my wife, for my family. The next morning I woke up and I could feel my wife's presence there. It felt comforting. And this next part of the story is probably the toughest part for me. I couldn't really feel my leg. I couldn't feel my toes. I couldn't move them at all. And uh, I could hear my wife praying behind me, just talking softly. And... I looked down and I saw her hand laying in my hand. But I couldn't do anything. I couldn't squeeze it. I couldn't feel it. And this flood of thoughts and emotions kind of went through me. Was I ever going to be able to dance in the kitchen with her again? Was I going to be able to play baseball with my future kids? Man, I... I almost lost it to the point where I started to cry and I asked her, I said, or I told her, I said, I'm, I'm paralyzed. I'm not going to be able to do this and that. We're not going to be. And she stopped me very calmly. And she said, Drake, you're not paralyzed. You've had a hemorrhagic stroke. And you're suffering from paralysis that this brain bleed has caused. And what we're going to do right now, we're going to make the choice to, to go to these therapy sessions, to go to rehab. We're going to make the choice to keep pushing, to keep going. Because you, you haven't put 30,000 people in Madison Square Garden yet, buddy. You haven't won any Grammys yet. We don't have kids yet. So we're going to make the choice right now to be an inspiration to keep going. That was amazing to have that in that moment. As we kind of transitioned back home, a lot of my friends from the music industry came by to see me. And they came by to talk to me. And my, uh, one of my friends and Guys, it's a great part of my team. He came in and he just asked me how I was doing. I said, man, I'm doing, I'm doing good, but I'm ready to get back to the stage. I'm ready to get back to this spot 
you know, to where I can perform. And he looked at me like I had three heads. And he said, Drake, you can't perform. You don't have your 100%. That 100%, I don't think he said it like that. He said, you're not at 100%. And yes, I wasn't at 100%. But I had a new 100%. A 100% that had a story that was deeper, that was more passionate. And I wanted to share it. And our 100%, our life does not follow this straight line. You know, and neither does our potential. It's not about how we compare to past versions of ourselves. Our true 100% is our ability to achieve joy by leaving it all on whatever stage we've chosen. It's about giving our whole heart and laying down our life force no matter how great or small, is an offering to what we adore. Nowadays I get to go and uh, I've met a couple of people with ABMs. One is this 21-year-old football player, ex-football player, that uh, his AVM ruptured and it stole his ability to speak. And I told him, man, look at us living with these insane pressures in our head, these things that have been robbing blood, adequate blood flow from us our entire lives. Can you imagine what we're going to be able to do when we get these things fixed? Can you imagine what we are going to be able to do when we're healthy? You may be able to speak Mandarin or find a cure for cancer. I may be able to write like Dylan or play like Jimi Hendrix. I don't know, but the sky's the limit. My point, my point was, we're all living with this insane pressure. Whether it be social media or anything like that, we're living with this insane pressure to keep going, to keep moving forward. And I want to ask you today, what is that pressure that you feel in the back of your head, pulsing, threatening to take away what you love about your life? And I want you to crush it. I want you to embolize it. And I want you to know that when we're cheering you on, we're not cheering you on because you hit that high note that you've never hit before. We're not cheering you on because you've climbed higher on the scaffolding than you've ever climbed before. We're cheering you on because you gave us your full heart. And as long as you know that that is what defines your 100%, we will never have to give anything less. Thank you.